If you are a person born with a vagina, chances are you have at some point in your life experienced the dreaded visit to the gynecologist. The cold, sterile environment, having to strip down in front of a complete stranger, laying spread open, waiting for that cold, clanky, razor-sharp speculum. What is it with that thing? It looks to be like some sort of old-timey torture device. The device is designed to dilate the vagina to give a clinician a clear view of the cervix, which is the ring of tissue that separates the vagina from the uterus. So, for an instrument whose purpose is to enter the most sensitive and delicate area of the body, why on earth is its design so barbaric? Well, its history dates back to a man, James Marion Sims. He invented this device to treat vesciovaginal fistulas, which is essentially a cut around the area of the vagina, caused by any form of trauma such as childbirth or sexual assault. For Sims, who was a plantation doctor in the mid-19th century, these were issues with which he would become closely intimate. By purchasing numerous enslaved women to be subject for his completely unanesthetized experimental surgeries, he was able to develop his own technique for treating vesciovaginal fistulae. This technique required a specialized tool to fully visualize the inside anatomy from the outside. This is what resulted in the modern day speculum. You may be thinking, wait, did I hear that right? The same design that was created in the 1840s is still around to this day? No, of course not. It's now made out of a different material. Aside from a minor change a few decades later, which made the device out of stainless steel or plastic rather than pewter, there have been no changes to the design of the speculum in over 150 years. Why is that? Some would argue this is due to the simple fact that the design works. So well, in fact, that it made its way into the standard of care for every single gynecological exam practically everywhere in the world. Scooch to the end of the table, and lift both feet onto the stirrups. Brace for the feel of the cold metal, you'll hear the creaking of the screw, and you will feel some pressure. If the practice works, why change it? For some patients, especially those who have experienced sexual trauma, the overall experience is so distressing that they may avoid it altogether. In 2014, the American College of Physicians went so far as to recommend against pelvic exams, citing the harms, fear, anxiety, embarrassment, pain, and discomfort associated with speculum examinations. This is something which affects all parties involved in the examination. Gynecologists have a harder time treating patients comfortably, and patients have a harder and scarier time seeking out medical help when it's needed. So some would argue, is the speculum really doing an effective job in gynecologist exams? The speculum is an effective tool for gaining access to the cervical tract and allowing procedures to be done, but it was clearly not designed for patient comfort in mind. There has not yet come a proposed replacement that would work as effectively as the current standard. Or is there? At this point in time, seemingly the best and most commercially available product is the Yona. It is the speculum redesigned, includes three prongs rather than two to allow a clear field of view without needing to stretch anything as wide. The handle allows for single-handed operation with a thumb button press that conceals the mechanism and the device is covered in autoclave silicone reducing the coldness, loudness, and overall scariness of the speculum. Yona, the company, also works to allow its users to easily and openly access information about their exam and provides information and exam room preferences within its app. They are seemingly the first company to also begin tackling the overall experience of the gynecological visit rather than focusing on the tools themselves. After all, shouldn't patient comfort be at the forefront of medical care?